Good morning and welcome to uh, San Francisco Public Works uh, hearing for today, February 9th, 2022. Um, my name is Dadisi Najib, hearing officer for San Francisco Public Works and uh, Nathan Rodas is our clerk this morning. This hearing is being recorded via Zoom and will be available afterward through a link on the San Francisco Public Works website at sfpublicworks.org. As this is a virtual hearing, there's no sign-in sheet. So if you'd like to receive information about the results of this hearing, please send an email to the email address listed on the hearing notice, uh, which is in this case, would it be BSM? I believe it's mine, my email. Can you provide that? It's Jessica period Salami, S-A-L-A-M-Y at sfdpw.org. Thank you, Jessica. Um, if you'd like to be on the contact list, please type and send your email address in the chat or send an email to jessica.salami at sfdpw.org. Um, this hearing is being held to consider two items uh, regarding uh, uh, violations, notice of violations for street space, for street spaces and no permit registration numbers. Um, we intend to go through the items in the order posted on the website and being shared on the screen. My job as a hearing officer is to gather the facts for the hearing items, listen to your testimonies and help our director of public works make determinations. I will not be making a decision today. Um, instead, I'll forward the findings from this hearing and make my recommendations to the director and the director will make the final determination. Once the director's determinations are made, the department will notify you of them if you have provided your contact information. The hearing will proceed as follows for the two cases. I will ask public work staff to speak first and present the case. Then I will allow um, the, the property owner or appellant in this case um, to speak. And then when a member of the public or a witness to uh, each item wishes to speak, then they'll be allowed. Uh, each speaker will have up to three minutes. The clerk will monitor the time for all speakers and will indicate when the speaker has 30 seconds left. If you are a party to this proceeding, I will call on you to speak. If you would like to use visual materials in your presentation, please let me know before you speak. You will then have the standard three minutes to provide your comments. If you are a member of the public or a witness who wants to speak, wait for me to call for public comments and then use the Zooms raise your hand feature if you're on a computer to put yourself in the queue to speak. If you are dialing in on your phone, you will dial star nine to indicate you're raising your hand. When it's your turn to speak, I'll recognize you. And if you're on your phone and you're muted, press star six to unmute yourself. If you would like to use visual aids in your presentation, please let me know before you speak. You'll have the standard three minutes. Uh, comments and questions should be addressed to me, the hearing officer, and not to the department or the applicant. If you cannot finish your comments within the allotted time, you may submit written testimony uh, to me by the end of this hearing. And if I feel a question is warranted, I'll ask a question. After all comments are completed, I will close the item. So today, um, also I wanted to just add that if, if anyone is on the call and wishes to where is it, uh, public comment, members of the public may address the hearing officer on matters that are within the department's jurisdiction, but not on today's agenda. So that's the second item on our agenda. Is anyone here from the public that wants to address any other items before we get started? Okay. So um, we'll now begin the hearing for order number 205-986 for 711 Eddy Street, uh, public hearing for the administration review of notice of violation number 13931. The violation is for no permit, no registration number, not registered, not bonded with San Francisco Public Works, Article 15, Section 725.2. Okay. Good morning, my name is Jessica Salome. I'll be presenting on behalf of the department uh, for today's hearing, Public Works Order number 205986 for the location of 711 Eddy. Uh, first screen here is just a copy of the director's order. Can you go to the next screen, Heloisa? Uh, 
On Wednesday, May 12, 2021, around four o'clock, an inspector responded to a complaint regarding the debris box placed in the parking lane at 711 Eddy Street. Upon arrival, the inspector found a debris box that was not registered with San Francisco Public Works. The inspector then issued a notice of violation number 13931 to Janus Corporation for not being registered with the San Francisco Public Works, penalty of $100. Janus Corporation is still not registered with Public Works. <clears throat> There's a letter of the, the appeal letter from Janus Corporation. And in the next, here's the picture of the notice of violation that was issued and posted onto the box. Next. And here's a picture of the debris box at the location. And as you can see in the bottom two photos, the notice of violation was posted on the box on May 12th, and here is the $100 violation invoice for the location. And this is just a snippet off of our website for San Francisco Public Works debris box permit requirements, rules and regulations. No debris box shall be placed on the sidewalk without prior permission from Public Works. Four reflective type warning devices, each having red reflecting areas of at least three inches in diameter shall be installed on the exterior ends of each box. The reflective device shall be placed so that one device shall be located near each end of the side and about the sides of the box and shall be no less than 24 inches or more than 45 inches from ground level. Both ends of the box shall be painted entirely with a four inch wide alternate diagonal stripings with colors approved by Public Works. The owner's name, address, telephone number, and debris box identification number shall be clearly printed on both sides of the box. Full debris box shall be moved within two business days. Is that it? Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm done, thank you. Thank you for your presentation, uh, Jessica. Is the uh, appellant on the call? Are you present? Are there any um, witnesses or members of the public that wish to speak to order number 205-986? Oh, Francis. Hello? Hello, can you hear Hello? me? Yes, we can hear you, Francis. <laughs> Hi, sorry, I thought I would be on, on camera too, not just the voice. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, so, uh, I we received this notice of violation, wasn't really understanding what was going on. That's why we sent that letter uh, to you guys. First off, let me tell you, we're a big corporation, a hundred dollar fine, we can just pay it immediately is not a matter of that, it's a matter of uh, we don't want to have any violation in code. I mean, in, in uh, with the city of San Francisco because we work here every day. Um, so as you can see, uh, well, first of all, I was very shocked when you say in one of your sheets that we're still not registered with the, Depart the Department of Public Works because we pay $10,000 every year to register a bunch of dumpsters that we use for demolition work in the city of San Francisco. And I can provide you with that. We recently, just a few weeks ago, paid for this year and it's approximately $10,000 that we pay. Uh, we get some uh, sheets of paper from you that we need to put on the sides of our dumpsters and we do. The problem with this one is being that location, unfortunately, in the middle of the Tenderloin, and we know how that area is right now. Those um, papers that we hang on both sides, we, we put them on a plastic folder, they normally get detached. But I can provide you with the documentation that we're registered with the Department of Public Works. And regarding the uh, parking lane where it is placed, it is a still active uh, construction site. 
run by general contractor Branagh. And Branagh actually has three or four parking spots secured with the city of San Francisco. As you can see in one of these pictures on the top left picture, on the parking meter, there is a sign. That sign is the city of San Francisco because it's, uh, uh, it's there. You see the top left picture on the parking uh, meter. There's a, a sign of no parking sign because those parking spots are secured by Grant Brana, which is the general contractor for us to place the dumpster. <clears throat> Okay, um, Mr. Francisco, are you finished with your? Yes. Thank you. Jessica, can you um, speak to that, please? Just yes. So the street space, yes, it is, it is active, and that is for the contractor, and it does allow a debris box to be placed as long as it's registered and bonded with the San Francisco Public Works Department. Um, having my, my admin that's on the call right now, she's checking to see if we've received payment for the registration. Um, our permits are not $10,000 for uh, we, boxes. No, it's not just are, one. Are you paying the San Francisco environment? Mm -hmm. Because San Francisco environment is a totally different, it's a totally different company. Could be. I, I need I need to check and I can I can get back to you. I was going to say is that amount of money because it's not one dumpster. We have like a six or seven dumpsters registered, but it could be as you say with the with San Francisco environment. I, I need to check. Okay, so um, Jessica, this the notice of violation was from May of this year, and and we're showing that. As of current, this particular uh, dumpster still is not registered according to our records. Is that correct? Uh, as of May of last year, it was not. I uh, just got it from here from my admin on January 20th of 2022. They have finally registered and bonded with the city and county of San Francisco Public Works. Okay, so that's excellent. So at the time of the violation, it was not registered nor bonded. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, um, Francisco? Understood. I, I didn't know. I We thought it was part of the same thing in the city of San Francisco. Okay. I, I would need to check uh, on my my records. Unfortunately, my operations manager who was going to be on this phone call too, uh, he's sick today, but I can check myself as soon as I get back to the office. Okay, if, if there's anything um, that you want to add, please send it uh, to Jessica and she'll forward it to me. But um, I appreciate your presentation. I'm glad that you all, your company is taking care of this registration and it's mm -hmm. sounds um, of course, yes. We, we, as, as I'm saying, it fits with the the public, the, the Department of Public Works, and we were not registered at the time. We did not know. We do not like doing that. We like being up to date with uh, all necessary registrations because, as I'm saying, we do a lot of work in the city of San Francisco, and we will. I will make sure that we are properly registered with the DPW and with uh, San Francisco Environmental. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Are you As I said, it's not about the hundred dollar fine. It is about being right with all the documentation we need to have. Okay, it sounds like like you all have taken care of it now. So I appreciate your time this morning. And I'm glad we were able to clear that up. Um, if you, there aren't any further comments or, or questions, is there anyone else on the line? Francisco, you were finished? Yes, I am finished. And I would just like to know how to proceed or if you're sending me a notification on my email, how, and, and the result of this hearing, of course. Thank you. Okay, you, you'll um, get the director's recommendations uh, via email, okay? Okay, perfect, thank you. No. Are there any other members, um, public comments or witnesses that want to make a comment about this item on the call? No. 
Okay, if there aren't any more public comments, um, no more comments from Public Works, we can close item number 205986. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye bye. You as well. Uh, next item up is order number 205 uh, 987 for 3861 19th Avenue, uh, 19th Street, sorry, public hearing, administrative review for notice of violation 14100. The violation is for no street space permit, Article 15, Section 724A, and for no four feet path of travel. Article 15, Section 724A2. Okay, Jessica Salami, Public Works again, presenting on behalf of the department. <clears throat> Can you go to the next slide, please? On Tuesday, August 17, 2021, around 11 a.m., an inspector responded to a complaint regarding construction activity at 3861 19th Street. Upon arrival, the inspector found a dump truck blocking the sidewalk and construction machinery occupying the public right away without a permit. The inspector then issued a notice of violation 14100 to Ashby General Contracting and Engineering for no four foot path of travel and no street space permit with a daily penalty of $2,000. A follow-up inspection was conducted on Thursday, August 19th. As the four-foot path of travel defect was resolved, it was closed with a penalty of $2,000. However, the construction materials and machinery were still occupying the public right-of-way without a street space permit and continued to accrue a rate of $1,000 per day. The no street space permit defect was closed out on Thursday, September 9th for a total of $22,000. As the construction materials and machinery were confirmed to have been removed from the public right of way, the violation was closed out with a total penalty of $25,000. Ashby General Contracting and Engineering never pulled a street space permit. There's an appeal letter from Ashbury, Ashbury General Contracting and Engineering, a copy of the violation. Can you go back to the letter from them real fast? Because I wasn't able to access. I just want to read it. Uh, give me a few seconds. Thank you. Okay. You can go to the next slide. It's a copy of the notice of violation. Okay, so the NOV was in August uh, 2021. And then when did we receive the letter from them? <clears throat> the letter was received in December. It was dated December 1st. We received it on December 3rd. Was that the first... Um, contact they had with us after the after the notice of violation um honestly i don't know because the inspector of record for this location he's been out on paternity leave and i haven't been able to talk to him about it okay and so generally when the inspectors issue an nov are they in is that face-to-face -face contact with someone or how is that let me see well, I want to say about 90% of the time it's face-to-face -face contact with people. Um, sometimes we do have to post them. This one was posted because nobody would accept the violation on site. Okay. And everybody just walked back in the house while they were working. Is is this a private? Um, it's a residential home. Residential. And as you can see from the photos, you have a large dump truck blocking the sidewalk and a portion of the street. You have a bobcat in the top right photo, as well as a generator backed up to a tree, leaning on a tree in the top left photo and on the bottom right on the bottom left photo. The notice of violation was posted on the garage door. 
Thank you, Jessica. Are there any more photos? Yes. These are photos from August 19th with the material and equipment still occupying the public right away without a permit. And these are photos from September 9th with everything removed. Uh, a copy of the invoice for 23 days of no street space and two days of no path of travel. And that's the end of my presentation. Can you go back to that? Thank you. Can you go back to that other slide real fast? Which one? Uh, this one right here. Uh, no path of travel. For, so the two days of no path of travel were in August. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then it took them how many days to correct it? Uh, we've gone back on the 9th, September 9th. And they're still, I believe they're, they're still working on this project. And That's Kevin can correct happened. me if I'm wrong, but. Oh, go ahead. Well, Kevin can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they are still working on this project. Is, are there any other slides? That's it. Thank you, Jessica Salome from Public Works. Is the, the appellant or present who wishes to speak? Oh, uh, I'm the owner of Ashbury. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. So. Um, this was kind of like a, a perfect storm. I'm, I pull a lot of DPW permits. I understand the process. Um, I was out sick at the time. Uh, we had a new project manager start. The project manager had, uh, had went and got a job card and didn't understand that there was also a DPW permit that had to be pulled with the job card. Um, and the other, so they got a job card on 812 and they're like, yeah, we have the, we have the DPW job card. I was kind of talking through this on the phone. Um, we went and pulled the DPW per permit on 820, two days later, we had a street space for the next uh, uh, 90 days. Uh, the permit number is 21-47-184719. So we had a we had a DPW street space permit two days later. The truck, the driver was uh, with the truck at all times. Um, and when the inspector came, they moved the truck. So um, it, I, I don't know about not being able to be issued the the. I think we got a written notice, uh, a um, a written um, violation or notice to. And I think they they accepted that notice, and we, again, from home, working through with a new project manager to get a DPW permit. It took two days later. Um, uh, hello, are you are you still talking? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Oh, oh, okay. Were you finished, Kevin? I I have a couple questions. Sure. Yeah, I'm finished. Okay. So I read the letter. Um. It's, it sounds, I know that you've been doing business with the city for a long time. I know that you know kind of what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. What, I, what I'm confused about is the 23 days that it took for you to become compliant. What happened there? I don't sounds, think it was, it sounds I don't like, think it was, was it 23 days? I think it was two days. What, what day was the, the citation issued on? Okay, it looks like you were issued a citation in August. And so according to the inspector's report, it was two days um, before no path of travel was provided or two days before the no path of travel was corrected. Is that right, Jessica? No. Okay, so that was two days. And, well, then, and then the, the other items, Jessica, are the... Um, 
So the no path of travel was the truck actually blocking the sidewalk, right? Correct. Okay. And then the other uh, 23 days were the items that were on, that were in the parking strip, correct? With no permit. Correct. Uh, I, I haven't had a chance to look up the street space permit. Um, I can't remote desktop in from my laptop right now. Okay. Otherwise I'll lose the Zoom link, but I can look at, have my admin look it up in a second. Okay, Kevin, you're, yeah, can... saying, you're saying that you all had a permit for that uh, street space location in the parking lane. Then is that correct, Kevin? Yes, two days later from the day of the citation, we we got the active uh, street space permit. Okay, and a, that number. the number you gave was 201 No, I'm sorry. It's number 21 47 184719. Okay, so. Okay, we're going to check that out. Thank you for um, providing that. And and, and and can I add one more thing? The truck was not left in the, uh, the, the driver was there. We didn't leave the truck overnight for three days. He, he moved, you know, at when the, when the DPW inspector came, he moved the truck like within minutes. And um, um, yeah, so it wasn't blocking. There was other items like the, and, and just, just so you know, we had a, we have a job on Sanchez right around the corner, which we had a DPW permit um i had uh one of my work trucks stolen twice from that site and the my twenty thousand dollar compressor was on the second time of the theft was actually taken off the truck um so, so that go ahead i'm sorry so that compressor you see sitting on the sidewalk with its wheels off was um you know we'd moved it from one site to the next site so for the two days that was yes yeah, that, that on the bottom uh left-hand pitcher, that's a that's an air compressor. Mm -hmm. um, and you see how it's on blocks and the wheels are taken off. Um, so you're saying that the, that's a dump truck, right? Yes, that's a dump, it's a dump truck, which was not left there for two days. It was left there, it was moved. It was temporary. In, it was temporary. Yes, in the, in the owner's driveway. But again, there was no, Barricades, path of travel. I, I've done public works. I, I I know the responsibility of a contractor, um, but the piece of equipment, which I think, what they're saying. I mean, again, if you check the permit, we had a permit two days later. Um, okay. But so typically, Kevin, um, when that's this type of work needs to be done, and you need to like back up onto a private property to you know throw debris items in or whatever. What should have been done in that case as responsible contractor? There should have been a path of travel created, an a, a alternate path of travel with, you know, barricades. Is that correct, Jessica? Yes. Okay. And so in this case, that wasn't done. And is there a reason why it wasn't done in this case? I, I was I was out sick. Like I said, we had uh, a, my project manager for six and a half years had just uh, moved out of state, a new project manager was trying to, you know, deal with it. I wasn't, it was like a perfect storm in, in, in form of my, uh, in terms of us performing work in San Francisco. Okay. Just, there was nobody really making those decisions and, and enforcing them. Okay. Um, oh, did you see? The application for the street space was on 819 and the signs were sent on 820. So 819 is when we we received the application? Yes. Was and when was it approved? On 820. And 820 it was approved. Okay. And it was and filed the, under 3863. So when and okay. So and then the NOV was issued on 817. The NOV was issued on 817, correct? Okay. So anything after 820, um, you should have been okay for? Is, is that what we Yes. Saying? Okay. So it's not 23 days now. No, it's not. 
would be 7, 8, 19. So it would be three days. Is that correct? Is correct. That 17th, 18th, 19th, and he was good starting on the 20th. Correct. Okay. And two days um, of blocking the sidewalk. Well, we weren't blocking the sidewalk. We The truck was moved. As soon as the DP, as soon as the inspector came out, we moved, we, we did not, we moved the truck off the sidewalk. Okay, but how- And we, didn't, mm -hmm. and we went and got the permit the next day. Okay. It wasn't active for those three days, but we went and got it, like- Okay, I hear what you're saying. Um, Mr. Bourne, I'm going to take your comments into consideration when I make my recommendations to the director. Ultimately, the director makes the final decision, but I'm, I'm glad that we were able to determine uh, that you indeed, in fact, had a permit for the majority of those days. So, um, Jessica, did you have any other comments? No, I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bourne, I think um, they, Nathan is keeping. Did you have any other comments, Mr. Bourne? It's a short oh, no, I didn't. No. We appreciate you and, and thank you for um, being present today to clear up some of this. And um, are there any other members of the public or any witnesses or representatives that want to speak on this item? Okay. Um, are there any other public comments on any other items on the agenda? If anyone has spoken, they'll not be allowed to speak again. And, and I'm opening this up for anyone who may have joined late. I can't see all the participants, but um, if anyone who has come late and didn't get a chance to speak on either of the two items today, uh, you'll have a chance to speak. Anyone? There's no other participants. Oh, thank you. Okay, so no more co public comments. Um, I'm closing this hearing. Uh, thank you much, uh, Jessica and Nathan, for your help today and for the folks who were able to join. The hearing is now closed. Thank you. Jessica, can you stay on for a second? Yeah, uh, I'll, Nate, can you?